Pretty sweet, Lord, to yield me up the seal. Take it, my liege, and look you use it now in such a sort as to be fit a clean. He needs not thy advice. The chance he doth. Nay, nay, my lord. The time for that is past. And yet you all do use it at this time, since you proceed against him over by those forms which I conceived and you consented to. Think you now upon one further article which you approved. And I must mind you of. I mean the right reserved unto the king to void and oversway the general doom if it offend his princely conscience. I do appeal unto your majesty. Dost thou in conscience cleave to their consent? As thou art king, now answer like a king. For the result, the council's will shall be our conscience. Thou art answered, Lord. I sir. My lord of Suffolk, he is your prisoner. Sirs, take away this duke and guard him, sure. Ah, thus King Henry throws away his crutch before his legs be firm to bear his body. Now is the shepherd beaten from thy side, and wolves are gnarling that will gnaw thee first. Would that my fears were false. Would that they were. Oh, Lancaster, for thy decay, I fear. Farewell, good king. When I am dead and gone, may honorable peace attend thy throne. to appoint his day of trial. May lords, what to your wisdom seemeth best, do or undo as if ourself were here. What will your highness leave the council board? Aye, Margaret. My heart is drowned with grief whose flood begins to flow within my eyes. Oh, Uncle Humphrey, on thy face I see the map of honor truth and loyalty. And yet, good Humphrey, is the hour to come that ere I prove thee false or fear thy faith. What lowering star now envies thy estate that these great lords, Margaret, our queen, do seek some version of thy harmless life. Thou never didst them wrong. Nor no man wrong. And as the butcher takes away the calf and binds the wretch and Beats it when it strays, bearing it to the bloody slaughterhouse. Even so, remorseless have you borne him hence. And as the lamb runs, lowing up and down, and can do naught but wail its darling's loss, even so myself bewails good Gloucester's case with sad, unhopeful tears. And with dimmed eyes look after him and cannot do him good. His fortunes I will weep. And twixt each groan say, who's a traitor? Gloucester is not. We, Lord, cold snow melts with the sun's hot beams. Henry, my Lord, is cold in great affairs, too full of foolish pity, and Gloucester's show beguiles him as the mournful crocodile with sorrow snares relenting passengers. This Gloucester must be quickly rid the world to rid us of the fear we have of him. That he should die were worthy policy. And yet, we want a color for his death. It is meet he be condemned by course of law. You think you worry that is possible? Most possible, if those that are his judges receive their office at our instigate. Ah. That's well bethought, but how may we contrive it? I will contrive it, lords, and presently. The king is pliant, Warwick politic. And since I never have opposed the duke, but by well-hidden and unopened means, I may proceed without suspicion. Farewell, my lords, I will about it straight. Look soon to hear of Warwick's good success. 
in my mind that were no policy. The king will labor still to save his life. The commons happily rise to save his life. Let us not stand on quillets how to slay him. My noble Suffolk, tis resolutely spoke. Not resolute, except so much were done. <laughs> Say but the word. I will find means enough. I am his jailer and will be his priest. <laughs> Here is my hand. The deed is worthy doing. And so say I. Let Suffolk shrive him straight. God grant him peace. Great lords, from Ireland have I come a man to signify that rebels there are up and put the Englishmen to the sword. Send succor, lord, and stop the rage with times. To breach the crave, the quick expedient stop. To our best that one of us with swift dispatch should post as regent to the My lord of York, to Ireland will you lead a band of men and try your hap against the Irishmen? I will, my lord. And please his majesty. Why, our authority is his consent, and what we do determine, he confirms. I am content. Provide me soldiers, lords, whilst I take order for my own affairs. I see it truly done, my lord of York. Deal you with Irish traitors, half so well as I do mean to handle them at home. England shall be safe. My lord, farewell. To Ireland thou. And Humphrey, thou to hell. Ah, York or never. Steal my fearful thoughts and change misdoubt to resolution. Faster than springtime showers comes thought on thought, and not a thought but thinks on dignity. My brain, more busy than the laboring spider, weaves tedious snares to trap mine enemies. Well, nobles, well. It is politically done to send me packing with a host of men. I fear me you but warm the starved snake who cherished in your breasts will sting your hearts. <laughs> Twas men I lack. And they will give them me. I take it kindly, but be well assured they put sharp weapons in a madman's hands. For which assurance, ere that I go hence, I mean to remove my chiefest enemies, great Suffolk and the mighty Cardinal, by laying open to the Cretan commons all they have wrought against the unhappy Gloucester. And that may Warwick easily accomplish and be as regent to my interests. Whilst I, in Ireland, nourish a mighty band. I will stir up in England some black storm shall blow ten thousand souls to heaven or hell. And this fell tempest shall not cease to rage till the golden circuit on my head, like to the glorious sun's transparent beams, to calm the fury of this mad bred flaw. And for a minister to my intent, I have seduced a headstrong Kentish man, Jack Cade of Ashford, to make a motion, as full well he can, under the title of John Mortimer. This devil here shall be my substitute. By this I may perceive the common's mind, how they affect the house and claim of York. Say that he thrive, as tis great like he will. Why then, from Ireland come I with my strength, and reap the harvest which that rascal sowed. For Humphrey, being dead, as he shall be, and Henry put apart, the next for me. <laughs>